Hey guys, it's your favorite medical channel, Medicosis Perfection Nails. We continue our playlist on pulmonology. In the previous video, we started talking about head and neck cancer. Today, we'll talk about nasopharyngeal carcinoma, cancer in your nasopharynx. It's a squamous cell carcinoma. This one is related to EBV, Epstein-Barr virus. It's a nasty cancer. Epstein-Barr virus was involved in one of the lymphomas. Do you remember it? If you say Burkitt's lymphoma, you're absolutely correct. The starry sky appearance. Once upon a time, there was an oncologist camping in Montana, and then he decided to lay back and enjoy the stars and the sky. And then he said, I see those wonderful stars. They remind me of the macrophages. And then the sky is the background, a background of malignant B lymphocytes. If you remember Burkitt's lymphoma, if you don't, please watch my video on Burkitt's lymphoma. It's in my playlist called Hematology. With that being said, now let's get started. Let's start by answering the case of the last time. Please pause and try to guess the diagnosis on your own. Okay, ready? 59 year old recent immigrant comes to your office, neck swelling, recently immigrated from southern China. He described the location of the pain as left side of the neck. His PMI is relevant for recurrent sinusitis. He tried many over the counter decongestant, but they didn't treat it. Vital signs are within normal limits. On physical exam, you found multiple enlarged, painless lymph nodes in the cervical chain. A scope revealed a mass in the posterior nasal cavity. You took a sample and sent it to the pathology, and then you asked him about his favorite meal, and he told you that it's salted fish, and he eats salty fish every three days. Now, what's the diagnos diagnosis? Please pause, and the answer here is, so we have southern China, an old male, enlarged painless lymph node in the cervical chain. So this is cancer. What kind of cancer? It's a head and neck cancer. But now we have two important clues. Before we talk about the clues, why cancer? This is an old male and most cancers are commoner in males, except thyroid cancers and gallbladder related cancers. Also, it goes without th saying that the female reproductive related cancers are only present in women because men don't have uterus, so it's impossible to see endometrial cancer in a man. Get your head out of your sphincter. It's like one student in an anatomy exam in my home country, Egypt. The anatomy exam was the prostate. Describe everything you know about the prostate, and it's an anatomy question. And his answer in the first line was, the structure of the prostate in male differs from the structure of prostate in females. No comment. Back to our discussion. So we decided it's head and neck cancer, but which cancer? First clue is southern China. Second clue is salted fish. You add these two together and you end up with nasopharyngeal carcinoma. So which of the following is likely to be seen on biopsy? Please pause. Now let's discuss that. Normal tissue, shut up. Benign adenoma, shut up. Basal cell carcinoma, it's not a skin cancer, so shut up. Keratinized squamous cell carcinoma is the correct answer. It doesn't necessarily have to be keratinized. We have three possibilities. A, keratinized squamous cell carcinoma. B, non-keratinized squamous cell carcinoma. And C, undifferentiated or basaloid can carcinoma, not basal, basaloid. Okay, next we have benign polyp, shut up, chronic cyanidinitis, this is Grin syndrome or any other cause of chronic cyanidinitis, also rheumatoid can affect these um, salivary glands. But the difference is Grin affects the minor salivary glands, rheumatoid arthritis affects the major salivary glands. If you know this teeny tiny distinction, you're an excellent doctor. Cellulitis, stop it. Nasopharyngeal abscess, no way. Why G and F are wrong? Because the vital signs were normal. You didn't see any fever, tachycardia, tachypnea, hypertension, etc. Second question, which of the following agents is most likely to be associated with this condition? 
Biological Warfare, Radiation Exposure, Epstein-Barr Virus, Human Papilloma Virus 31 and 33, Coxsackie A, Methanol, Ethylene Glycol, or Radium. Please pause. And the answer is, is here is Epstein-Barr Virus. Epstein-Barr Virus is crazy. It's associated with lots of stuff. Nasopharyngeal Carcinoma. Don't ever forget that. Infectious mononucleosis, don't ever forget that. Hodgkin's lymphoma, don't ever forget that. And even non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. EBV is terrible, just horrible. And if we are talking about non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, especially Burkitt's, big time. That's why your exam loves to ask about Epstein-Barr virus because it includes a multitude of things. Nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Definition. A malign... Oh, imagine my shock. A carcinoma is a malignancy. Who could have imagined? A squamous cell carcinoma, to be specific, you can write it SCC, or you can write it this way, squamous cell carcinoma, arising from the epithelial cell, because it's a freaking carcinoma. Carcinoma, epithelial cell, sarcoma, soft tissue or connective tissue. Of the nasopharynx. Epidemiology. Most common malignant tumor of the nasopharynx. This should give you a pause because it's important. Most commonly in the posterolateral nasopharynx or pharyngeal recess, the fossa of whatever. It's commoner in male than female. Imagine my shock. Most cancers are commoner in males. NPC or nasopharyngeal carcinoma is commoner in certain regions of East, East Asia and Africa. There are two main subtypes, Chinese subtype and African subtype. This affects adult Chinese. This affects young kids in Africa. So southern Chinese to be specific and northern Africa. Commoner in adults, this one is commoner in children. In children, nasopharyngeal carcinoma is uncommon, generally speaking. Why? Because the most common cancers of nasopharynx in a child is rhabdomyosarcoma or malignant lymphoma. But on your exam, <laughs> it's probably going to ask you about nasopharyngeal carcinoma because it's associated with Epstein-Barr virus. By the way, if you started to connect the dots, Burkitt's lymphoma also had an African subtype, and it was a kid with a mass on his side of the neck, and it was also related to Epstein-Barr virus. What does rhabdomyosarcoma mean? Okay, sarcoma means it's a malignancy of not the epithelium, but the connective tissue. And as you know, connective tissue includes what? Muscles. So myosarcoma is a cancer of muscles. Which type of muscle? The rhabdo, the striated. Let's do some rhabdo here. These are striations, baby. They're called rhabdo. So rhabdomyosarcoma, malignancy of striated or skeletal muscles. Pathogenesis of nasopharyngeal carcinoma, Epstein-Barr virus, the nasty virus. There is genetic susceptibility. And some authors argue that it's related to consumption of salted fish. That's why it's, in, it's endemic in areas where people love salted fish. I'm from Egypt. I love salted fish. I've ate it a lot, but then I've heard that it's related to this, so I stopped. But I feel so bad that I had lots of these and nobody told me. Until I had my pathology wake up. Histopathology. So you have told us that it is squamous cell carcinoma. Which type? There are three probabilities. Keratinized, non-keratinized, or undifferentiated. Prognosis, horrible. The three-year survival rate is 60%. Not good. Which means 40% of patients with nasopharyngeal carcinoma are going to die within a three-year period. By the way, in the next video, I have a great song or a mnemonic, like a piece of poetry about nasopharyngeal carcinoma that will help you memorize everything. So, complications of nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Growth, it's a tumor, it's a cancer. Grows, leading to nasal obstruction, nasal discharge, epistaxis. It invades the skull base, because it's close to the skull base. Can affect the fifth cranial nerve, aka trigeminal, which is mostly sensory, impaired corneal reflex, which branch? V1, ophthalmic baby. Loss of facial sensation, which one? V2 maxillary branch baby weakness of the jaw muscle it's the only motor branch v3 mandibular honey weakness of the pterygoids deviation of the jaw on opening toward the side which to which the jaw deviates so if you see a person and the jaw deviates like this so this is like a teeth let's add some teeth here so there is deviation towards the left 
So if the jaw is deviated to the left, is it weakness in the left pterygoid muscle or the right? And the answer is going to be the left. And now you can review anatomy to remember that. It's easy, by the way. Sixth cranial nerve, the abducens, abducens abducts the eye. When you injure the abducens, you lose the abduction. Therefore, this will lead to adduction or adduction. So your eyes move medially. This will lead to diplopia because it affects one eye and not the other. Cavernous sinus syndrome, and we have talked about this before in this playlist on pulmonology in my video on rhinosinusitis. Metastasizes, it's a carcinoma. Carcinoma loves lymph. Sarcomas love blood, but carcinomas love lymph. So lymph, which kind of lymph nodes? Cervical lymph nodes, 70% of cases. And of course, it's a painless lymphadenopathy because cancer is painless, infection is painful. How to diagnose nasopharyngeal carcinoma? Histopathology, of course. Any cancer, the gold standard is going to be the pathology. Physical exam and CT slash PET scan, this is staging. And if you remember my musical mnemonic, physical exam and CT scan. Stage 1, small tumor confined to the nasopharynx. Stage 2, tumor extending in the local area. Stage 3, large tumor starting to get larger. And it can go bilateral. Stage four is when the bleep hits the fan. Large tumor involving intracranial or intratemporal regions, extensive neck disease and or even distant metastasis. Treatment, like any cancer, chemo and radiation. We have talked about cavernous sinus syndrome in my previous video on sinusitis, but today let's review. Abrupt onset of unilateral periorbital edema headache, photophobia, orbital swelling leading to bulging of the eyes, forward called proptosis, chemosis, which is swelling of the conjunctiva. Neurological, we have motor and sensory. Motor, we have those nerves, especially sixth nerve leading to your eyes looking inwards. And th third nerve, the oculomotor, ptosis, down and out, and midriasis. Midriasis. Blown pupil, down and out, and ptosis. Sensory problems, you lose V1, periorbital sensory loss, including the impaired corneal reflex. You injure V2, loss of facial sensation. How about pressure? Increased intracranial pressure will lead to Cushing reflex. Watch my video on Cushing reflex because it's really important. Papilledema and retinal hemorrhage. Spread of infection to the contralateral cavernous sinus and can occur within 24 to 48 hours, which is horrible. You don't want to miss my next video, so please subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when I release my next video, which is going to be awesome. I know you're struggling to learn about Legionella, Mycoplasma, Pseudomonas, Klebsiella, Rhinovirus, Staph, and Septon, E. coli, and Vibri Cholera. Please check out my friend's website called Picmonic, Pictured Mnemonics. It's amazing. See the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. Please support this channel on Patreon. I'll give you my notes, my cases, and my everything. And you can even download the slides of this lecture and every other lecture about all kinds of subjects. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.